Many people in the uh, developing world depend to some degree on animals for their daily livelihoods. Um, the livestock sector is one of the largest and fastest growing parts of agriculture as it tries to respond to an increasing demand for meat and milk products from people in the cities who have more and more disposable income. This presents great opportunities for economic growth and for bettering the overall food security situation of rural and peri-urban livestock keepers. Now, critics of livestock development programs often state that donors and governments need to be smarter with their design and commissioning of livestock research and development programs. What do you think, Jim, is the one activity that those involved in the setup uh, could do more of or maybe less of in order to achieve development targets? Well, thanks for the question and thanks for this opportunity. Um, I think the, the, the key here is that donors, governments, uh, private sector partners all need to take um, a highly integrated approach to dairy value chain development, particularly everyone needs to understand the end, end market specifications and whether that end market be a, an urban retail market or a local um, market for uh, raw milk sold farm to farmer, farm household to farm household, or even the intra household market. All of those markets um, have specifications for uh, quality of the milk, um, for volumes and for the timing of those volumes, particularly consistency across the year. So as donors, we need to make sure that um, our programs reflect a good understanding of those specifications um, and that those specifications are communicated up and down the value chain so that everybody understands what they are. And then we can have training programs and, and uh, extension support programs to make sure that, that um, our target households, smallholder farmers or pastorals meet those specifications. So it is actually a communications thing, largely. It, it is communications. And, you know, we have an opportunity now with the, a lot of digital equipment, inexpensive digital equipment and with cell phones to, um, to communicate all up and down the value chain, uh, quality of milk and volume and so on, so that the uh, specifications are, can be presented to everyone and we can design programs to correct problems or to build on opportunities uh, to, to improve the efficiency of the value chain. Donor investments in the dairy sector have seen both uh, successes and failures, obviously. Why do you think uh, that is? What's the principal reason for this? The failures, I think, again, relate to uh, not having a good understanding of end market specifications. So a successful competitive dairy value chain really requires three under uh, underpinning kind of uh, uh, conditions. First of all, you have to have high efficiency at all along the value chain, including at the producer level, at the household producer level. And that means um, well-managed animals, well-managed cows, uh, good quality feeds, um, good efficiency in terms of uh, individual cow production and the, uh, the production income, uh, you know, against cost. Secondly, you have to have quality milk. And I think that's one of the problems that um, the donors and governments uh, are not addressing. End markets require quality milk. If you have problems in your milk, it's going to create problems for processors. It's going to create problems for retailers, and you can't build a national identity for quality milk, and that lowers your competitiveness. And thirdly, and this one is, is, is also not addressed very often, and that's consistency of supply across the year. Processors can't afford to have the supply coming into their processing plant varying by 40 or 50 percent across the year. It has to be consistent. Um, and that means that as we work with smallholder households, we have to focus on good breeding management and focus on good feeding management, particularly forage and fodders.
Now, donors, funders, governments go out and encourage companies to invest in livestock and dairy development projects by employing profit or social responsibility criteria to justify that involvement. What do you think is the main pro and what is maybe the main con of these new partnerships? Well, I think there, there's a lot of pros, obviously, in profit-driven investment. Um, it, uh, profit implies a certain level of efficiency, a certain level of sort of sharing of gains and returns all along the value chain. Um, to be profitable for an investor, they have to see a high return on their, their investment, and that means that they have to collaborate closely with all members of the value chain. The cons I see, particularly for social investing, the, the, the cons will be if we overlook some of these fundamental basic um, conditions that have to exist in a competitive, efficient value chain. Again, that's productivity at the producer level, quality of milk, not just uh, contaminants, but also the, um, the level of desirable constituents, fat and protein. And then consistency across the, the year, which we don't uh, we don't do focus enough on, and that that gets to uh, animal feeding, uh, livestock feeding, cow feeding, and, and so on. Is there maybe also an issue in the fact that all these different types of donors and groups that we just described are reacting to different kinds of incentives? They do, but. Perhaps that's uh, one of the challenges as donors that we have to meet, and that, that's make sure that everybody understands the incentives. We build certain disincentives into the system so that uh, we don't um, sort of impact on the competitiveness and resulting in problems for, the, for all of the value chain experts, uh, actors. There has to be consistency up and down the value chain in terms of communications and messaging, uh, progress being made by all actors uh, in terms of building competitiveness. Uh, so that's, that's the key is information and sharing of information, making sure everyone, including household producers, understand, uh, get the message, understand it, and can act on it. Now, there's also quite a lot of discussion currently uh, about the time after the 2015 MDGs. What do you think uh, should be the immediate priority activity of livestock donors and funders in that context? What we see in, in all developing countries is a rapid uh, rising rate of urbanization. And we know that urbanization creates demand for animal source foods, dairy, meat, eggs, poultry, and so on. That opens up an opportunity for rural economic growth that, that poor households can participate in if they have the right um, uh, attributes, including training, a degree of capitalization, access to markets. So in the, in the post-2015 uh, goals, you know, donors, livestock donors have an opportunity to uh, enlist, the, utilize the, the tremendous rural economic growth potential of animal source food markets and uh, help poor households pastoral is to link to those markets through good training, proper management of their animals, um, collaboration with other value chain actors, uh, utilization of, of proper and management practices, adoption of appropriate innovative uh, technology. That's where we should be focusing and, and looking to the, uh, the, the tremendous capacity of of this animal source food market and the tremendous growth in urban demand to transfer wealth back to our, our households and help families to, to really grow out of, out of poverty. Thank you very much.